Hello everybody, ciao a tutti! Here we are with episode 2 of our paper stained glasses practice. If you didn't practice with me last time, I highly encourage you to do so. Or you can start from today's practice because it's exactly the same technique, media and design and then go back and also do the other ones, right? For today's practice, we're going to use a regular piece of copy paper uh, and markers. Black, definitely not extra fine, but just a regular tip black markers. And today we're gonna work on the with the other half of the color wheel. So are my favorite side of the color wheel, the cold colors. So I got some light blue, medium blue, dark blue, turquoise, light green, dark green. Gather what you have available. And for this practice, it doesn't really matter if they are permanent or washable marker because they will all be permanent on the paper. So last time I used the half of the paper. I saved the other half. If you didn't, just grab another piece of paper. You fold it in a half and you cut it. And remember something extremely important. Since we are working on a regular piece of paper, the marker will pass through. And so you will mess up the surface right and it's going to be extremely difficult for you to clean it up so try get something to uh, cover the surface and the table that you're working on it could be i'm using a journal like the cover the back cover of a journal you can have a clothes whatever but just make sure that you keep your stations like nice and neat and you protect the surface i'm gonna switch the camera so we're gonna have fun once again just for in case you're new, this is a very easy practice. It doesn't require any specific skills, if not like the ability to trace a sort of segmented lines on top of the lines that the paper will create. And you will understand why we started this together and just a basic technique of coloring with markers. What is beautiful about this practice is that it's extremely cheap and affordable, it's something very easy, anybody can do it any age, any level, really, regardless your artistic skills. It's something that you can do in company or by yourself. By yourself, if you want to shake it out the stress and the anxiety of some days, right? And you want to just have something to relax it that it's not technology related, such as watching TV or scrolling on the phone. You can do it with your kids, with your grandkids. You can make your kids doing it with their having friends over. So it's a something, it's a very nice, right? An alternative to video games, for example and you can do it as many times as you want just playing around with palette so the only conditions that I'm imposing is the color palette so we're gonna use a restrictive because we don't have all the colors available right we have just the cold side of the color wheels and they are analogous color because they sit next to each other. It's going to be beautiful to see how this color makes you feel, how they interact with each other and how beautifully they will create a cohesiveness, a visual cohesiveness is your piece, in your piece. And then at the end, we're going to compare and contrast the practice that we did last time with this one. And then, you know, you will give yourself your answer. And you will let me know in the comment, hopefully, which palette did you like the most. So I'm going to switch the camera. Let's get ready. Okay, let's keep filling some more spaces. We still have plenty of choices, so it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to take too much time to figure out where we want to just put the colors but then you will notice that it will become a little like uh, more tricky and we need to do some considerations Remember also that if you have a favorite color among these colors that we're using, use it more compared to other.
see where else. Let's do one more here. And one more here. Take a moment to take a look and see. Focus on the color that you're using so you will be able to see if you have to add the same color in some other area of the design in order to create something nice and balanced. switch we're gonna add a darker blue now we go darker nice this one is gonna be easier to track down because it's darker you can see it like popping up from other colors so make sure that you use enough and you distribute it if you're using a darker blue or whatever like a darker tones of the colors that you're using make sure that you equally distribute it among those pieces, the spaces, sorry. One here. I think I'm gonna go for a big piece here. I always get surprised when something so really simple like really piece of paper and markers can turn into something uh, so pretty to look at uh, so satisfying right it's such a good idea of how to spend our time together or by yourself Remember, every time that you need to take a break, take your break, pause the video. And then go back to the practice once you feel refreshed. And focus. Try your best, however, to work for an extended amount of time, just because it's such an important uh, uh, skill to develop, skill that we used to have much more in the past and now because of the pace of our society and all the stimulation that we receive constantly and the use of, you know, the massive use of technology in our life and in our jobs, unfortunately we are losing uh, 
these mental abilities, right? I see that in school we have many more kids now with ADHD or other like uh, uh, attention deficit or issues and challenge. And I think that this type of art practice are extremely beneficial for everybody, of course, but in particularly for people who are overexposed to technology or kids and adults that struggle with this type of issues. Let me see. I think I'm going to go here with some more dark color, dark blue. And I really hope you like the noise of the markers on the paper. <laughs> it's gonna be not the paper, otherwise definitely you're gonna feel some discomfort for this practice. I think I'm gonna add here as well to One more here. And probably I would do here and here. So I wanted to have a little more on this side. Now we're going to switch. We're going to go back to that later. Let me see if this is a color that we already use or not. We might have had. Let me see. No, it's a new one. It's another turquoise. Similar to one that we use, but not the same. So when the color will be dry and they will settle, we will see the difference nice link between uh, the blue and the green nice 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 Something positive about this type of project for which you simply have to follow the steps and if you follow the steps, they will turn into something beautiful and successful regardless your artistic skills and your experience is the fact that they bring all of us together, right? If the artists, the not artists, the people who are familiar with techniques and colors and art in general, People who never practice art, or probably, well, never, they might have practiced in art just in school. It's really like a, our type of activities that break the barriers and make us enjoy all together. Mixing uh, people from different age, different skills level and I really love it it's very meaningful and important to me so you cannot go wrong with this one
And then I use my other hand with two fingers to keep the paper flat because sometimes it's, it is a little tricky because it's a pretty thin paper. So, and we crumble it up at the beginning over here. A bit one more over here. Maybe here. And I am ready to switch the color. Now let's go start with the green, nice and bright. Remember what I told you at the beginning, if you don't have so many different colors, like so many different tonalities of greens and blues, you can overlap them and mix them. Of course, uh, we know that markers don't blend uh, like other media like watercolor so but still you will alter the color of the you know the first markers by overlapping a second one and you will create and you will give yourself a, um, a more uh, diverse color palette just remember that since we are working on regular paper markers can be pretty powerful so if you push too hard or if you accidentally stay too long on the same spot working with your strokes you might break the paper so mostly if you are a beginner if you are a young young artist and you're learning with me just make sure that you are delicate and careful and you pay attention because you really don't want to risk to uh, break the paper after so much work right that we have been putting in also if by accident your paper read a little bit uh, around the edges keep working very carefully and at the end you just put a piece of tape on the back to save it so you can store it properly and it's gonna stay there for a long time. We are getting closer now, it's tricky. We need to be careful. We don't want to place the same color, you know, exactly in two spaces uh, next to each other, but it might happen in that case. What we can do, we can go over with another marker and fix it. And so we change and we alter a little bit the color so it doesn't look exactly like the other one. I lose my patience over this one. I'm gonna go over just lightly and gently because I didn't like all the strokes. paper I'm gonna add one more bright green here one more here one here one here 
here. Let me see, maybe one here and one here. Then, uh, hmm, streaky here, here, here. And maybe I'm gonna switch. Oh, one little here, and I'm gonna switch to another green. This one should be a little darker. We will see immediately. Yes, nice and intense. Beautiful. And we are gonna go ahead and fill the few spaces left over. Now, you might have more spaces than I do have, or you might have less so that always depended on the way that you outlines the your lines at the very beginning right after we crumple the paper but the steps the technique is going to be exactly the same you will just have to use more of a color or in another I really wish, I wish that we could, you know, that you could share the picture of your, you know, your composition, your project with me, because it would be so nice to see that even in something like so simple, with basic steps, we can show our different styles in the choice that we make about the intensity of the outlines, the colors that we use, how much of a color instead of another that we use. And I know that we are using uh, the same color palette if you follow my instructions. So you're working on cold with cold colors, but still I can assure you that they will look different at the end. I did it with students and it was a group of 27. And let me tell you that no project looked like another. They were so beautiful and they reflected the personality of my students and also their ability, the technique of two you know, for coloring, uh, some of the students were older or more advanced. Basically, really, the only thing that we need to take care of is the good quality of coloring, avoiding scribbles and uh, uh, avoiding gaps. small and this big. this one with this green and it looks so pretty this one this one we need to pay attention now this one one this one as well what else maybe one this big this one I really love this green so I'm gonna use as much as possible just without uh oh look and it happened I place it next to another green 
So now what I will need to do is like I will have to grab a color, maybe the very light green and go over it, altering a little bit the green without ripping the paper so they look a little different and they are not exactly the same. Now, let me see that I have another green available. Maybe I do, I have a more of an olive green. If you do not have another green available, you can use, for example, this green and add some yellow on top to make it a brighter and a lighter. Or you can actually do the lime green on top of the light blue and create another color. So be resourceful and use what you have and that is also like you know and it's a creative approach right practice okay this is what i have this is what i can do i'm gonna mix these two colors and then i'm gonna mix the other two colors so i will give myself other two new colors so that i can use in these patterns right we need to be resourceful we don't stress out because we don't have exactly what the other person is using. We keep our mind open, our heart open, mental flexibility, embrace the practice and the unexpected and do the best that you can do with it. And most of all, have fun while you're doing it. We are about to be done and it looks so pretty. Doesn't it look like a stained glasses window? It's in a glass window. Well, maybe not exactly, but that is the, the illusion, right? No here, not here. I can put it here. Everything else is filled. We need this, just these three. And uh, maybe I'm going to use the dark blue for this one. And for this one, creating a sort of a triangle here. And for this one, uh, I cannot use the dark blue. Hmm, maybe I can use the... Slightly different, a medium blue. Yep. And that is it. Now, look what I do. I'm going to take the practice that I did the other time. Look how pretty they look. And look and compare and contrast. So this is all warm colors. This is all cold colors. Analogous colors in both because they are colors that sit next to each other in the color wheel. Which one is your favorite? If you're more into warm colors, probably you would go for it. I don't even need to answer because you know that I'm very into this palette. I just feel that together they really look amazing. So if you're doing this practice with your kids, you can ask them, contrast and compare. What is similar into the two practices? What is different? What are the feelings that, that those colors, that these colors give you versus the feeling that these colors give you? So I'm going to turn the camera so I can say goodbye. Okay, guys, we finished finally, and this was practice number one. This was practice number two. They are really, really, really cool. I am so curious. So let me know in the comment when you will have a chance to do both practice practices. Which one did you like the most? Which palette did you feel more connected with? And once again, it's been a pleasure. I cut for myself this time that I spent with you practicing some art, doing something so like a funny and colorful and cheerful. And I hope that you enjoyed as much as I did. Consider to subscribe to my channel and share it spread the world and once again leave me comments i will do my best to read them and to answer to you uh, as soon as possible have a wonderful wonderful day and a wonderful wonderful life ciao